One of the highlights of this year's Melbourne Documentary Film Festival is a feature documentary called Lee. And it's my great pleasure to have um, speaking to me, the director of Lee, Ryan Gaskett. Ryan, welcome to Movie Metropolis. Great, thanks for having me. Good to talk to you about uh, uh, this really fascinating man, Lee Conkey. How did it come about that uh, you knew about him and that you were able to make a film about him? Um, well, it started as a school project. Um, so I had to do like a 10 minute documentary for, for school when I was at uni. Um, I had friends of mine that lived across the road from Lee and um, they actually suggested, you know, to, to do a documentary on him that he'd be an interesting guy. Um, I did film with him earlier for um, a small segment we did for a TV show for school as well. And um, what he did sort of just off the cuff, you know, on camera was really, really funny and um, he was a really interesting guy. And so it was sort of a no brainer when it came to doing the doco that that I'd do it on him. Okay, so uh, tell me about your process uh, in terms of uh, making this feature documentary, getting financing and, and so on. Yeah, well, you know, cause I was just a student and it was just a, a, um, my sort of first real, real thing to delve into. Um, basically I was making the 10 minute documentary and then um, in the interviews, it was really clear that this needed to be something a lot bigger. Um, just due to what he was talking about and and um, and how much info there was, um, so about a year later, I started a crowdfunding campaign um, where you know um, raised about I think fifteen fifteen thousand or something like that just to get started, and that got us through a fair bit of filming and everything like that. Um, but for the majority of it, after that, it's been pretty self funded. So okay. Uh, I mean, there's so much to reveal in his story, as, as you say. I mean, first mm. of all, of course, we learned that he's a chainsaw uh, wood sculptor sort of artist and uh, uh, living up in Eltham or that sort of area. It's a really fascinating uh, place that he has. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone who I would speak to about doing this documentary, you know, er everyone from around the area knows of him. Um, they might not know him, but it's like, oh, is that the guy on Main Road? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like everyone knows his house. It's a bit of an iconic sort of spot. Um, and I do remember seeing it as a kid as well and, and wondering about it at the same time. So it's um, he's definitely got a bit of intrigue around that area. And in filming this as a feature documentary, how much permission did Lee uh, give you uh, in terms of what you could film, what you could discuss, uh, and yeah. how much did he say no? No, everything. He was that. That's that's what sort of made made the film what what it is. Is that he was trusting enough of me at the start. Um, I, I met with him um, before filming, and we had a good chat for a while, and got to know each other a little bit and he felt confident that that um you know I was going to tell his story right but it was more that I guess um over the period of filming and doing the interviews that we became friends um so in the end you know most of the interviews and things that we were doing and things we we're talking about we were just talking about as friends you know just happened to be on camera um so he felt pretty open to talk about anything I mean there's nothing that he hasn't been been um closed off about at all um which is pretty amazing access you know that's not normally the case with docos mm, exactly and did you use a, a single camera all the time or did you have a crew sound recorder uh, et so it was it, it was single camera it was it was it was just me um most of the time um there's a there's one particular scene in the film um without giving too much away but it's a bit of a sort of a, a heist type scene of uh where he 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 um places a protest sculpture in a sort of you know particular location in the city and we've got to it's be sort of in and out of there pretty quick without the police finding out and all that sort of thing so with that one we had about you know 10 minutes to film it um and so on that one we had about five of us shooting um we hired a hotel across the street and uh filmed through the window and had four of us on the ground and we all had comms and we're talking and <laughs> it was uh, it was fun it was pretty fun to do um but outside of that it was just just me with my small DSLR and sitting down with Lee, you know. I'm glad you mentioned that, the, the refugee sculpture that he uh, put mm. together and, and uh, uh, in subterfuge was then placed in front of the age building. Uh, I thought that was mm. so interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was a funny, it was, 
yeah, it's one of those ones where it was, you know, quite a meaningful thing for him to do. Um, but then also just the idea of, of where to put it and, and the sort of scene itself ended up, you know, having quite a comical element to it as well um, as, as being serious. Um, but just the process of making it was the best part of it. It's like, you know, Lee had found that passion again to start creating other than just, you know, sculptures for playgrounds or this and that sort of bread and butter stuff. He was actually making something not for money and for a purpose and something he believed in and he's really passionate about it. And um, and I also helped a little bit with sort of burning in some of the words and a friend of mine did as well. So it was nice to actually be part of that too. You know, it sort of felt like it was all of ours at the same time. Um, so that was a really nice experience, yeah. Uh, I'm sure it was. And it has a really interesting payoff at the end, which we won't uh, spoil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, you've interviewed some really interesting people, including uh, our recognised Sarah Lamberg. Um, getting these people to talk on camera about Lee must have been an interesting process for you. Yeah, so I guess it's lots of um, lots of people that Lee knows, so lots of his friends and stuff. And I guess the, the one thing that's interesting about Lee um is that you know the amount of people that he knows and the amount of difference in in people that you get to meet is really really out there um which was a good experience for me um so you know interviewing people obviously from his past from his childhood um current friends different artists you know um that was really great sort of just being able to do that so i guess there was a bit of access things with like Darren Hinch and stuff like that but um that was sort of around the um um case for Lee going to court with um uh, someone who abused him as a child and um and yeah Darren Hinch was quite heavily involved in that back in the 80s um so there was yeah there was a few lucky strokes of getting certain uh access to certain people yeah well, well done on that, because that uh, certainly uh, rounds out the documentary nicely. Now, Lee is interesting mm. because he also has some health issues. He, uh, we, you talk about, or he talks about having gout, but um, he also discusses his drinking uh, and other issues. Yep, that's right. Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess interesting part is that Lee was never really much of a drinker back in the day it was more drugs um you know um back in his sort of 20s and everything like that or teens 20s and uh, it wasn't until a bit later that he got into drinking obviously and um yeah you know the, it, it's i guess it comes to a bit of a, a a hard point in the film is when he's really really struggling with gout um and can't really carve you know and um you know having to make that decision to actually make a change in his life and and you know coming up with a, a purpose for that just very randomly one night of wanting to climb Mount Fuji, which was as <laughs> is not where I thought the doco was going to go at all. And um, and that's where we ended up taking it. So that, that was his goal was to climb Mount Fuji, which, you know, considering, yeah, how unhealthy he was at the time to have that goal and to think to do that within, I think it was two and a half, three months. It was pretty amazing. It was, and, and I found that quite bizarre that that would be his sort of bucket list uh, event that he'd want to do to climb Mount Fuji. Was it? Was it was very. Yeah. It was very random, and I mean, strangely enough, you know, because he wasn't because he was in such a bad way, and you know, he was quite drunk when he came up with that idea as well. So it was it was an interesting it was an interesting idea. Um, he loves Japan. He'd been there the year before, and um, his brother had been, been plenty of times. So. It was one of those things that was, um, you know, it'd be great to go to Japan and then somehow we got talking and he just come up with that. Like the moment that he comes up with the idea to climb Mount Fuji is the moment in the film, like it's on camera where he actually comes up with it. So it was, <laughs> it was really funny in a way for him to come up with that. But for everyone who knows him, it was sort of like, it's really funny, but it's also, it's Lee. I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's went to North Korea. He's done all sorts of interesting things. Um, so but yeah, it was just another part of his journey. <laughs> that going to North Korea, that was so bizarre. I, I found that yeah. incredible. How, yeah. How, how could he get in? <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I mean, his, his brother, his brother, Wayne, um, who passed away a few years ago, he was a big traveler. Like he, he would, um, he, and that's, he introduced Lee to Japan and stuff. But when they went to the, to Japan the other year earlier, um, they went to China and a few other places and they went to to North Korea and it was just like you know Lee was just like well you know you hear so much about it I want to you know see it and make my own 
idea of it and, and know a bit more about it. And so they went there and, they, you know, some really interesting stories. And obviously there's some funny footage of Lee in North Korea, you know, in the middle of the streets, kicking a, kicking a footy. Um, but, you know, obviously they do guided tours there and it is a little bit closed in to what you can see and all the rest of it. But, um, yeah, it makes for an interesting, interesting story. <laughs> Absolutely, I could just see a spin-off about his his trip to North Korea and how he didn't yeah. get arrested or followed or anything like that. I know. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now the trip to Japan to Mount Fuji. I mean, that must have been a a logistical and financial issue for you, I suppose, in following him, filming him, etc. Talk about that. Yeah, so I guess you know, like the crowdfunding that we did was was fantastic to be able to get that and just the support from um community you know essentially the the local community and family and friends really um but you know because the film changed and 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 sort of evolved and we went along with what happened um that only got so far so it was sort of equipment and then a certain amount of filming um and then yeah went to japan obviously and that was sort of where things changed a lot so yeah, Wayne, Lee's brother, he organised the whole trip and he was really great at keeping the budget down. <laughs> keeping, we stayed in backpackers and he actually booked me and Lee into a, a room together, which we didn't know until we got there. We were sleeping on the same bed, which <laughs> was like a closet space. And, um, yeah, I built a bit of a wall in between us with, with a pile of bags, which Lee found pretty funny. Um, but yeah, it was like, you know, a hard tatami mat thing that we were sleeping on together in this little closet. Um, but you know, it was a fun experience staying in these backpackers and things, as opposed to staying in some westernized kind of hotel, it was really like good being part of it all and meeting people and, um, having a really cool experience. So, yeah. Uh, the glamour of filmmaking. It's, uh... <laughs> yeah, I think it's more fun that way. It's better <laughs> getting, you know, really involved like that instead, you know? Yeah. And, and following him up uh, that uh, uh, mountain, uh, that, I mean, obviously exhausting for him as we see uh, as the film progresses, but must have been mm. exhausting for you as well. Yeah, it was. I mean, I was, you know, I, I did all right fitness-wise, like leading up to it and everything like that, but I did have to carry a bit of gear and I did travel lightly. Like I didn't take, I didn't take a full tripod. I just took, you know, the camera on a monopod and a few other bits and pieces that I needed. Um, so it was as light as I could go, but still a bit to do. Um, and, you know, constantly, you know, like you, you go pretty slow up the mountain and having to sort of, you know, run a bit to get ahead of Lee to get certain shots and this and that, um, you know, it was pretty tiring. And once you get higher and higher and the oxygen level gets a bit lower, it's, it becomes a lot slower as you go. Well, congratulations on on uh, being able to do all that and to, uh, yeah. to, com to complete it. Where, of course, again, we won't mm. reveal what happens uh, on that uh, journey sure. up uh, Mount Fuji. So, mm. uh, uh, so here you are, Ryan, with all of this footage that you've uh, got to the uh, uh, Japan and and uh, uh, the interviews that you did and interviews with uh, uh, Lee himself, etc. You obviously had a lot uh, of footage the editing process must have been quite a task for you. Yeah, it was huge because I didn't really know, even though I'd filmed so much and there were so many different stories and things like that, it was really hard to know how to structure it, you know? And so I, I, I thought it would take me a year. I'd never done a feature before. So I thought, yeah, I'll get it done in a year. And it took five in the end. So it was really, really not what I thought. Um, I think after a year I had, had sorted all my footage as in, you know, I'm pretty meticulous with, with my folders and organizing, you know, this and that. So I could find any piece of footage like instantly when I needed it. Cause when you're in the flow of editing, you want it, you want something straight away. You don't have to go looking for stuff and then you get a bit lost in the flow of it. Um, so that helped the process a lot, but it was really more about, I think I spent at least two, three weeks just writing the film out on paper. So doing a bit of a paper edit which didn't end up being what the film was, but it at least gave me a point to start structure wise. Cause you could start anywhere with his story, like backstory wise. And then obviously all the things that unfolded as we were filming was really interesting, but how to structure it and trying to remember what, what I know and what the audience doesn't know and that they, what they need revealed when, and all that stuff was a real learning curve for me. So. Well, well done on that, being uh, able to put that together. And, and of course, it, uh, the film is also punctuated with the um, court case, with the abuse that uh, that Lee had had been through. And that 
in itself, uh, that must have created a few issues for you, perhaps legally or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an underlying thing in the whole film, you know, what what is behind Lee's, um, you know, alcohol and drug abuse and all that sort of stuff. It's like there's a, it, there's a reason why, and um, and you know, try, try he could never find the teacher. He had his name slightly wrong, and so this teacher abused Lee when he was seven or eight years old. Um, and tracking him down and then finding other people that were abused by him as well and then having the courage to take him to court was was really huge and as i said with darren hinch like he tried to get this guy back in the 80s he sent sent someone into a, a, a meeting that they had with wearing a wire and everything and he was like running this meeting this 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 pedophile it's just you know um amazing how long you know and then it's you know with all, all that happened, there's a lot more people that came forward because, because of the court case. And we hope that, you know, with this film that a lot more people do as well. Um, legally, you know, it's, 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 he's, you know, he went to jail, he went there for three and a half years, which is, you know, pretty dismal really. Um, but at least something happened. Um, but um, yeah, there was concerns there, but I had it all, everything cleared. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, very good. So I'm quite intrigued with, with the final version of your uh, film, uh, Ryan. How did Lee respond uh, to seeing that? Yeah, so he saw bits and pieces over the years, you know, but, but seeing it in full, um, he really liked it and also said how uncomfortable it was because it's him and in a good way. So it's like, you know, it was which that, that's, that's how I would expect, you know. Um, there are certain parts that are quite confronting and quite dark and, and I expected him to maybe, you know, find those ones hard, but he was actually pretty good about it. I think because he's creative and he's an artist himself, he can really understand, you know, um, what I'm trying to do here as opposed to seeing it in a, um, he can see it a bit more objectively like that, not take it personally. Like he knows what's important and what's not. And it's, I mean, it takes so much courage to do what he's done and to say, what, I mean, I couldn't do it. So, um, and he knows that that, that that means a lot to me that he actually was able to do that. And um, we have that respect with each other. So I think he just trusted me and um, and he was happy with the end result and the, the, the feedback that it's getting and stuff, you know, he's happy with that obviously as well, so. How's he going now? He's doing okay. Yeah. It's a um, bit of a hard time at the moment. So physically, you know, he's, um, he had to get a uh, hip operation. So he had to get his hip replaced. And that was a long time coming through COVID and everything else. And then he had a heart attack in the meantime. And um, a whole lot of stuff has happened since the filming, which is a whole other story really. That's quite interesting. Um, uh, the age, so the good weekend just did a story on us on the weekend about sort of our friendship. It's in the two of us, it's called. And that goes into a bit of detail about the things that have happened over the past few years, which have um, been quite hard, particularly losing his brother um, was, was really difficult. Um, so yeah, you know, he's um, physically, yeah, struggling a bit at the moment, um, but um, hopefully, hopefully can turn that around. Yeah. Well, it's great that the film is screening at the Melbourne Documentary Film Festival. Um, have you also submitted it elsewhere for other screenings? Yeah, so it's 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 um, I've submitted it to quite a few of the festivals. It's it's since last year, so I started in October. So I think it's gotten into I can't remember. It's gotten into quite a lot. It's gotten into maybe twenty or something like that, um, and it's won maybe five or six. Um, and then we've got a couple of screenings coming up. Obviously, there's um, there's the the Melbourne Documentary Film Festival, um, and it's also doing a local screening in Eltham as well, which we organised um, at Montsalvat, um, which would be really cool. But then, yeah, there's more there's more festivals coming up that it's been submitted to that we'll um, we'll wait and see. Okay, so Ryan, I'm uh, I'm intrigued. Were there any particular films or filmmakers that maybe inspired the way you approached making Lee? Definitely, definitely Doco. I mean, just Docos in general, I guess. The funny thing is, is that like Lee's Lee's brother is really he knows he knows everything about film. He was he was just incredible with with his knowledge on film, and he found it hilarious that I know nothing about film. <laughs> like I I don't know much about certain directors, and just he just found it really funny. Um, 
I am pretty obsessed with documentaries and I've, you know, seen it, that it's, it's almost exclusively what I watch, you know, like, so I, I guess I've been influenced by a lot. I guess I really like um, Errol Morris's work and, and Werner Herzog and stuff, but I wouldn't say they'd influenced the way I've done this one. Um, their style's probably a little bit different. Um, I definitely like Joe Berlinger and stuff, the guys that did the Metallica documentary. I think that's probably more closer to that sort of style, you know, like, because that film really unfolded in the moment as it was happening for them as well and same same as this so I think that was that was probably more of an inspiration than than uh the others yeah okay so what was the initial spark that got you interested in being a filmmaker um I was definitely interested in it like I remember being really interested in filming as a kid like when we'd have a handy cam or you know was able to access something like that and then you know as a teenager we did quite a lot of filming but didn't really make too many films or anything but just loved the idea of just filming things um and then you know I guess I I did a bit of a audio visual course early on and did a little bit of editing in there in like iMovie or something I was like oh this is I really like this um but then you know I went off and worked in the wine industry for I think six years or something like that and did a few other things and then I came back and studied as mature age student um and got into it then so it was pretty sort of late really for me um to come into it yeah interesting journey and uh and yeah. so <laughs> so Ryan are you working on another film at the moment no, I mean at the moment it's just like I'm I'm really um I'm really busy with with work with my production company like I'm doing quite a lot of different stuff um and I will be definitely working on something when it comes up but at the moment it feels like I really want to focus on getting this doco out there once it's done then I'll be pretty clear. I did write start writing a few things here and there um but something will come up and I don't like to plan it too much. I like, you know, I mean this doco wasn't planned at all. I like the idea of once the idea comes there, I'll know it for sure once I hear it, you know. Um, so, yeah, maybe working on in the background without knowing about it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. What does yeah. your production company involve? Uh, you know, just regular stuff. So I've been doing it for um, on my own now for maybe five or six years. So um, just promo videos, you know, um, uh, corporate stuff. I do a fair bit of music videos and a couple of little bits and pieces of docos and stuff like that but it is a real range of different stuff and it's just you know bread and butter what I do for 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 work um it's enjoyable but um the real passion stuff is stuff like this doco well congratulations on the documentary we've been speaking to Ryan Gaskett who is the director of Lee uh docu a feature documentary playing at this year's Melbourne Documentary Film Festival Ryan thanks so much for talking with me thanks very much appreciate it all the best. Bye-bye. It's that. Bye. -bye.